The sun is shining and Taunton is at its best for its best. As the Lady Mayor greeted 40 Commando with that, the streets erupted into cheers and applause. Thousands of people lined the town centre, determined not to miss the day, proud local friends of the Green Berets in this their base location, who've adopted them as their own. There's also an influx of relatives too, relieved to have their marine back from Afghanistan for good. It's just a six months living nightmare really. It is, I'm just so relieved when they come home safe and sound. You entrust your son to the local people while he's based here? Definitely, yes. Yes, and he does like it, yeah. He does say that they're all really like, good to them, yeah. Back on base, the 700 Marines were joined by more than 2,000 friends and family members, as well as their Captain General, the Duke of Edinburgh. At nearly 92, the oldest Green Beret on the Astro turf enjoyed his reception, widespread appreciation and awe. For 40 Commando, the six weeks they now have off will help to close the door on a decade of Afghan commitments before they train to re-roll away from counter-insurgency operations. The main thing is, I think, is relief. Relief that the whole, the whole escapade is over. Obviously, we're trying to get the transition across to the Afghan uh, security forces, which I think we achieved towards the end of the tour. Uh, and you can see that in the amount of base closures we managed to close during our tour. I'm definitely happy to have gone, um, especially since it was the last tour for Marines. It was pretty much my last chance to get out there. Um, it wasn't what a lot of the guys, myself included, were expecting, uh, but that's a good thing because it means that the country's come along a long way. It's definitely better that nothing too bad happened. While some Marines may redeploy to Afghanistan as part of ongoing support and mentoring for the Afghan forces, a full-scale commando unit will not be sent there again. I've been looking back at 40 commandos' experience in Afghanistan right from the beginning. In the aftermath of 9-11, 40 Commando supported US Special Forces hunting for Osama bin Laden in the mountain caves of Tora Bora. As Operation Enduring Freedom became operatic, the tight-knit Corps of Royal Marines has cycled its 7,000 men through 12 Afghanistan deployments. 40 Commando went back as a formed unit three further times, with individual Marines swapping into sister units on their tours too, and combat operations in Iraq also on the order of battle. As the gruelling decade went on, members of 40 Commando came home saying the progress from their previous visits was becoming visible. On Op Herrick 7, Bravo Company discovered and destroyed a drugs lab in the Upper Sangin Valley. By Op Herrick 12 in the town of Goreshk, where market life had all but evaporated because of the danger, bustle and business were reviving as insurgents were flushed out and local people spoke of feeling more secure. Op Herrick 17 has involved handing bases over to the Afghan forces as part of the staged withdrawal from Helmand over the next year. But each deployment has not been without its sacrifices. Five years ago this week, this parade square was brought to tears as three Marines who didn't come home were remembered and Britain's first triple amputee serviceman, Marine Mark Ormrod, along with double amputee Marine Ben McBean, were among that tour's wounded heroes, embodying the Green Berets' determination to achieve in spite of adversity. In 2010, the homecoming from Herrick 12 was a surge of relief and the beginning of grief, as 40 Commando returned to Taunton to come to terms with their hardest hit, losing 14 men in action, with many others sustaining life-changing injuries. For their bravery and distinguished service in Afghanistan, almost 200 members of the Corps of Royal Marines have been awarded operational honours. 40 Commandos reservist Lance Corporal Matthew Croucher earned the George Cross for throwing himself on his rucksack to shield his colleagues from the blast of a grenade. Although the last Herrick tour has been focused on transition, it too brought tragedy. One more Marine, Corporal David O'Connor, was killed in a gunfight in October. A sapling dedicated to his memory will take its place in the troop of trees, standing in a rank of permanent remembrance for the fallen comrades of Afghanistan at Norton Manor Camp, the home of 40 Commando Royal Marines.